What's up guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 34. I was just on vacation for about the last 10 days. I got back last night and uh, Cosmo's really happy that I'm back. Literally could not care less that you're back. Jesus, that's really hurtful and mean, Cosmo. But uh, anyway, I was relaxing for most of the trip. I did manage to play one poker session and I videoed it. Um, I'm sharing it with you guys here and there are a ton of interesting hands. I'm actually analyzing 15 hands for this episode, which is by far the most I've ever done for a vlog before. I hope you guys enjoy it. And let's go ahead and get into it. I'm in Florida right now. I just got back from a cruise to the Bahamas and I put out a tweet saying that I was going to be in Florida. Uh, this guy Chris, he reached out to me saying that he lives in the area and was interested in playing a poker session. So he's about to pick me up and we're going to the Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa. Pretty excited. Oh, here he is now actually, I think. After not playing for over a week, I'm eager to sit in the game. Chris and I are seated at different tables and I'm happy to find that none of the other players at mine appear to be pros. About a half hour into the session, I pick up pocket tens on the button, the players under the gun and under the gun plus one both limp in. Now under the gun plus two makes it 30 with a short stack. This is pretty alarming because almost no one other than me was raising preflop very often and this player in particular had limped several times already. Here he is now, pumping it up with a short stack from early position after two players already entered the pot. I don't love my pocket tens, but can't see how I can reasonably fold. I call, hoping that other big stacks will also call. The other players end up folding, so we go heads up to the flop. The flop comes 9-3-3 with two hearts. The player bets 35, I call. The turn is a three, this time my opponent checks. I bet 50, hoping to deny him any equity if he has a hand like two overs. Instead of calling or folding, he jams for 65 more. I don't see how he could be bluffing here, but I can't fold for that price. I make the call, the river comes out, it's a four, and he rolls over pocket aces. I got played like a fiddle. Next we get 10-8 of hearts under the gun. In tougher games with a lot of three betting, I'd fold this but that's not something I have to worry about in this game, so I open to 15. The button and the big blind both call. We go three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out ace, ace, deuce with two clubs and one diamond. We all check. The turn is the nine of diamonds. The big blind checks. No one appears to be that interested in the pot so far. I bet 20. The button calls while the big blind folds. I don't think the button is very strong. It seems like he could call light with a nine, another smaller pocket pair, or a flush draw. The river is the king of diamonds, completing the backdoor flush draw. It's possible my opponent has a flush, but there are a variety of other weak hands that will be in his range as well. I don't want to bet small and run the risk of getting called light, so I make a pot-sized bet repping a flush or a boat, and he lays it down. An orbit later, we get pocket fours, under the gun plus one, the player under the gun limps in. Anytime I'm first or second in the pot and have a hand I want to play, I almost always raise. Here I make it 20. The player on my left now three bets to 70. Like I said earlier, there aren't many raises pre-flop in this game from the other players, 
and there certainly aren't a lot of 3 bets, so I assume this gentleman has a monster. Now the player on his left, cold calls the 70, I imagine he's going to have a very narrow range with hands like 9s through queens, ace-king, and ace-queen. The button calls and the under the gun player folds, I'm getting almost 5 to 1 on a call, so I come along. We go 4 ways to the flop, and it comes out queen-jack-4 with 2 hearts, so we flop bottom set, which is great, but with three other players behind me in a three bet pot, there's a decent chance we could be beat. I check, the three better bets 90, then the player on his left slides in a raise to 250. The button folds, the action is again on me. In general, folding bottom set on the flop is atrocious. You never want to do that. I can't remember ever folding a set on the flop, but this seems like a great time to do it. Not only do I have to worry about the player who raised the flop, I also have to be at least a little concerned about the player who 3-bet me and then C-bet into me and two other players who called the 3-bet preflop. I tank for a very long time going through all my options before deciding that I'm not good enough to lay it down. I shove, the preflop 3-better folds, and the other player calls for 427 more. Here's what happens. You want to go once or twice? You can't do that. <clears throat> no? Not on, not on a 2-5. No, right, you have a set? I might be drawing that. You call? You have a set? Yeah, queens. Yeah, that's what I thought. Show me. It's set over set? Uh, I need chip count, please, sir. Here. I don't make quads, and I'm stuck 900 on the day. After reloading, I pick up ace-jack offsuit in the cutoff. Three players limp in. I raise to 35. I only get one player in middle position to call, we're heads up, and the flop is 10-9 deuce, all hearts. He checks, I see bet 40, he checks his cards for a heart, and then makes the call. The turn is the deuce of clubs, this time he leads out for 60. It seemed like a blocker bet, I saw him take a similar line against a different opponent earlier, and when he got raised he folded. With that hand in mind, I raise to 150 and he folds pretty quickly. I take it down. Later I look down at ace nine of clubs on the button. The player under the gun limps in and has by far the largest stack at the table. He said he'd been running extremely well that session. The cutoff limps in with a short stack. I've got a hand that's too good to fold on the button. I could just call and see a flop, but raising gives me the opportunity to play a bigger pot in position and I'm stuck piles, so that idea sounds pretty attractive to me. The blinds fold, and now the under the gun limper, three bets to 90. The cutoff folds, it's on me, it's 65 more to call, I'm getting two to one with a ton of implied odds because the player is almost always gonna have aces or kings here, and perhaps ace king, but mainly just aces. Having a pretty good idea of what he has while taking into consideration the fact that we're well over 200 big blinds deep, I'm in position in getting two to one, I make the call, hoping to drill the flop. It ended up being king 7 5 rainbow with no club. I absolutely missed it, and it's great for the hands I put him on. He bets 100, I fold, and he turns over aces. Here we have 7 5 of diamonds in middle position. The player under the gun limps in. I'm on tilt, trying to figure out ways to play big pots and get unstuck. Not necessarily the best strategy. I raised a 20. The small blind calls as well as the player under the gun. The flop is king 10 9 with two clubs and one diamond. Gets checked to me and this board is a bit too connected for me to fire a C bet. I check back. The turn is the jack of diamonds giving me a flush draw and a worthless gut shot straight draw. The small blind leads out for 75. The other player folds. This should be a fold for me, he 100% has a queen here for the straight, he's betting more than the pot. On the other hand, if I hit a diamond, I might be able to get the 275 remaining in a stack. I'm getting roughly 2 to 1 explicit odds, and with the implied odds, I'm getting almost 6 to 1. I'm about 4 to 1 to make the flush, and I'm stuck. So much money, I make the call. The river is the 8 of clubs, so the front door flush draw gets there. He checks and is clearly afraid that I have the goods. I try to rep it and shove since he only has a few hundred left. After tanking a bit, he makes the call. I don't even want to turn over my hand, but I do have a straight in case he somehow miraculously called with a set or two pair. So I turn over my hand. He lets out a sigh of relief 
and turns over ace queen with the ace of diamonds and queen of clubs. In hindsight, it's not a great strategy to try and bluff rec players when you think they're relatively strong. In this instance, it doesn't help that he had not only a queen, but the ace to go along with it. So maybe he folds a queen without the ace, thinking that he's either chopping or losing. Still, I could have saved a lot of money by making different decisions pre-flop on the turn and on the river. So we're doing great so far. This time I get pocket jacks on the button. The cutoff opens to 20. I hadn't seen him raise pre-flop once up to this point. I figure he's very strong, so I call rather than three bet. The blinds fold, we're heads up. The flop is 10-5 deuce rainbow. He checks, I bet 25. He raises to 60. I want to fold, but I can't. I call, the turn is another five. He goes all in for around 150. I can only beat a bluff unless he has ace 10. I honestly think he limps with that from the cutoff preflop though. I call because they can't always have it, right? The river is another deuce. He turns over pocket queens. I guess they can always have it. It's one more spot I found myself in where if I was playing my best, I might have been able to get away from it but it certainly wouldn't have been an easy fold. After that, it's time to walk away and regroup. Getting slaughtered pretty badly right now here in Tampa. Got set over set. Lost with the tens versus aces, lost with the jacks versus queens. Bluffed off a few hundred. And uh, just not playing good discipline poker right now. Set over set. I honestly wanted to fold that. Never wanted to fold a set more on the flop ever. Um, just when it gets three bad, someone cold calls, it's just going to crush their range basically, so couldn't get away from it. Um, the other hands have just kind of just continued to hunt off a little bit, so uh, need to rein it in, get back to playing good, good poker. Eating a turkey sandwich? Taking a little bit of a break. Uh, I think it's a good idea to step away from the table when you're not playing your best and you're down. So they just opened up a new 5-10 game. Maybe not the best idea to, to hop into that when I'm stuck 1400. But um, I think it might, it might help me to refocus a little bit, take the game kind of more seriously, and uh, give me the opportunity to have sort of a fresh start. So I'm going to jump in that and hopefully get some money back, maybe book a win tonight. After doubling up literally half of my opponents in the 2-5 game, I walk into the VIP room that they have for the 5-10. The room is really nice and the game looks amazing with only one other pro. He's seated directly to my right. Him and I get into it several times in some big pots. I've got about 2,000 in front of me and I'm in for 3,400 total on the day. After a few orbits, I get eight six of diamonds, under the gun plus one. The other pro, who's a really nice younger guy, opens the 40 from under the gun. No one is three bet so far in the game, so I feel safe calling, even though folding an early position with a drawing type hand is generally the better play. We are very deep, so it's certainly fine to call in this spot too, given how passive the players behind me are. The button, who seems to be a complete beginner, also calls, we go three ways to the flop, and it's 8-7 deuce with two spades and one club. The preflop raiser bets 80. I've got top pair and a backdoor straight draw. Seems too weak to let it go, but I'd like my hand a lot more if there was a diamond on the flop. Still, I'm not gonna fold top pair to a single bet. I call. The button folds, so we're heads up. The turn is the king of diamonds, and my opponent fires again. He bets 225, which is 75% of the pot. It's a big bet. This is a great card for him to double barrel on as a bluff because a lot of times I'm gonna be calling on the flop with a hand like a flush draw, pocket pairs like nines or tens, and maybe some combos containing an eight. We have to look at what hands he's repping too. The king of diamonds is gonna be a bad card for him if he has nines through queens. So really he's just saying he has sets, aces, ace king, or maybe some combination where he C bet bluffed with king high and made a pair on the turn. With some of those one pair hands, I imagine he might check for pot control. Instead, he's betting quite a large amount as if he doesn't want to call. I'm not sure if you've watched this whole video so far, 
but my fold button is clearly broken today and something seems off, I call. The river is the seven of hearts. The player now bets 375. His range is gonna be extremely polarized when he triple barrels, at least sometimes if he has a hand that has value and he put me on a flush draw, he may check the river to give me an opportunity to bluff at it since I might not be able to call a bet. I call, thinking that he's gonna have air often enough. He says that he has jack high. I wait for him to turn over his hand before I table mine, just because this is a big pot and I don't wanna give away any information for free. He eventually turns over the jack nine of spades, so we flopped a straight draw, a flush draw, and had two overs to go along with it. Luckily, I got a good run out and was able to take it down. Now we've got 2,700 in front of us and we're halfway out of the hole. In this hand, we have ace five of spades on the button. The player we just beat in the last hand opens to 40 from the cutoff. I call and the blinds fold. The flop is eight six deuce with one spade. It's a rainbow flop other than that though. The opponent bets 50. With plenty of backdoor draws and one over, we make the call. Ace high by itself will be good fairly often too. The turn is the jack of hearts. The cutoff learned his lesson and doesn't try to bluff me. He checks. It looks as if he's decided to give up. I check back. The river is a five. He checks. I check. He says he has a five. I roll over my hand first this time, so I'm not sure what his kicker was, but I assume it was a four or a seven. We take down another pot. Next we get 10-8 offsuit in the big blind. The cutoff limps in, the pro in the small blind, who's the only player I've been able to beat today, completes. I check, the flop comes king eight five with two spades. All three of us check. The turn is the 10 of diamonds. The small blind leads out for 25. I've got two pair now and get a little tricky by just flatting. The cutoff folds. The river is the three of hearts, which shouldn't have changed anything. The small blind now bets 80. I underwrap my hand on the turn and here I raise to 200 on the river. There were quite a few draws once the turn came out, but all of them missed. It looks like perhaps I'm using my good image so far at this new 510 table to get away with a bluff with one of those missed draws. The opponent looks a little perplexed, takes his bet back, then tosses two black chips in for the call. Pretty sure he just wants to see what I have. I turn over two pair and it's a winner. I couldn't beat anyone for a few hours in the 2-5 and I'm still stuck several hundred, but at least I own this guy's soul. It's the guy's soul right here. Boop. Now we've got ace-king offsuit in the hijack. The player whose soul you just saw opens to 40 from middle position. Before anyone goes crazy in the comments section, I just want to say that the guy is really nice, seemed to have a good sense of humor, and I'm sure he crushes the game, usually. Anyway, I three bet to 115, folds back to him, and he calls. The flop comes king nine seven with two diamonds. He checks, I mix it up, and check it back. The turn is the jack of hearts. He checks, I bet 90, and he folds. An orbit or two later, I pick up ace king offsuit again in the hijack. This time, under the gun limps in. Under the gun plus one raises to 40. Our buddy on our right calls. We three bet to 165. It folds back to the player under the gun, he calls. The player in middle position calls as well. The flop comes king, queen, six with two hearts. Both players check, I bet 210. The initial preflop raiser calls and the other player folds. We're now heads up. The turn is the ace of hearts, we've got top two pair. Our opponent leads out for 350. I figure he has to have at least two pair here, maybe a set or a flush. I don't see any reason to raise, I call. The river is another queen. This isn't a great card because now I don't beat king queen or ace queen anymore. He checks. I'm not sure what I can get value out of, so I check back. To my surprise, the opponent turns over king jack of diamonds. He took an odd line. I'm happy to win. We've got over 4,000 in our stack now and are officially unburied. For the third hand in a row that we're going to analyze, we get ace king offsuit once again in the hijack. The player under the gun limps in, folds to us. I raised a 50. The small blind who seemed like a decent player, three bets to 165. The under the gun limper now flats. He's a complete rec player. I assume he has a low to mid pocket pair. 
There's quite a bit of money in the middle. The small blind seems to be one of the few players at the table who's capable of 3-betting light, and I'm at the top of my range, so I'm probably ahead of him. The rec player who limped in didn't 4-bet, so I assume he has a hand that I'm either crushing or flipping with. Neither of them have two largest stacks. Sometimes I'll flat, but in this instance, I 4-bet to 500. It's really unlikely that I'm up against aces or kings since I have blockers to both of those, so most of the time I'll take down the pot preflop, denying any equity my opponents have, but I don't mind getting it in for a maximum of 1200 against the small blind. The small blind basically snap folds, and the player under the gun, to my surprise, 5 bet shoves for 815 total. I call for the extra 315, the flop comes out 9 high, and my opponent right away turns over his hand. He has pocket nines, so I'm drawing stone dead. Wow, top set, huh? That's pretty good. Nice hand. The way he played his hand was very odd. He's almost always going to be flipping it best when he gets it in pre-flop. And a lot of the time, I'm going to have him in bad shape with aces or kings. But it works out for him extremely well here. After losing the $1,800 pot, my stack goes down to 3100 and once again, I'm stuck. Now we've got ace five of clubs in the big blind. The button straddles, so the action starts with the small blind, and he folds. I raise to 70, a player in middle position calls, the button calls, there are three of us in the hand, and the flock comes out king, queen, 10 with two hearts and one club. We all three check, the turn is the 10 of spades, the button looks genuinely disinterested, so I only need to get through the player in middle position with a bet. I put out 110, both players fold, and we win it. Next we have pocket kings in the cutoff. A player in middle position limps in, we raise it up to 50. The big blind calls and the limper calls as well. The flop comes, king 4-3, rainbow, we've got top set. To my surprise, the big blind leads out for 125. The other player folds. There aren't a lot of kings left in the deck, so I assume he has some kind of straight draw or possibly a middle pocket pair and he wants to see where he's at or something. I can't really be sure. I mix it up and go for the overbet shove because I want to throw him for a loop. I don't think he'll ever put me on top set when I do this. Just kidding. I call to give this player an opportunity to bet again on the turn. The turn is the seven of spades. Now he checks. This isn't a great card because I thought there was a strong possibility he had a straight draw and 6-5 gets there. I'm not checking back the second nuts though. I bet 225. He doesn't think too long before laying it down. After, I walk around to shoot some B-roll footage and meet perhaps the coolest guy in all of Tampa. How's it going? What's up, dude? How the fuck are you doing here? Just hey! hang out. What's up, guys? No way, you're doing the ball right here? Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, what's your name? Will. Nice to meet you, man. Nice Brad. to meet you, man. Yeah, I know who you are. You playing 2-5 uh, or what no, are you doing? No, one two, man. One, two? I'm just, I'm just uh, about a year and a half into my poker career. You know what I mean? <laughs> just learning, man. Just doing the thing. Watching your videos. Trying to cool. learn a lot, man. Awesome. Man, you teach me. You got me uh, a little bit of, little bit of um, advice here throughout the, throughout the short period. Yeah. But, man, what are you doing down here? Just, I uh, was in town. I went on a cruise with yeah. my girlfriend and then uh, we stayed a few extra days, so nice, man. played out here, yeah. Nice, dude. This is, uh, this is, this is man. It's great well, to meet uh, you, man. Yeah, nice oh, to meet I you, I can't man. believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> Put at least a little bit on there for Sure, me. yeah, you got it. See you, man. So, uh, playing 510, got slaughtered in 2-5, was down 1400 and... Um, You're not recording, are you? I, I am. Yeah, you, right? can't, you, can't you can't record in here. Oh, yeah, you sorry, can't man. do any video or anything like that. Sure. The poker room manager wasn't familiar with poker vlogs and was concerned about faces being shown. After speaking with him, he said I could film, but it seemed like a good point to rack up and head out now that I was unstuck. I got set over set and doubled up five different players without doubling up once myself. Somehow, I managed to win a small amount and met a lot of cool new people. I'd say it was a pretty successful day. Cashed out here at uh, the Hard Rock and cashed out for $34.47. So I booked a $47 win, which feels pretty good actually, because I was stuck 
think 14 or 1500 in 25 and then I got it all back and then some in the 510 um, I think I was up five or six hundred at the high point this guy right here got me in a big flip and uh, no I didn't see it man oh sorry man that sucks so uh, we got it in pre-flop with that four bet by four bet and he five bet jammed I had ace king offsuit he had pocket nines and he flopped top set and I didn't improve so uh, that one got me down a little below even, and then, uh, yeah, won a few other hands and ended up somehow a winner for the day, even though it's basically breaking even. Um, so, we're here with Chris. We're gonna go to uh, center the bar. center bar yeah. and have a beer. The bar was fun, I was happy, and I got to hear more about Chris's 2-5 session. Always nice to have a beer at the end of the day after you get unstuck. Just found out Chris won over 1500 on the session. Oh so that's pretty day. sweet. That's a good day. Yeah. A little 2 5 action. Very nice. After a few drinks, it was time to head over to Council Oak Steakhouse where I had one of the best steaks I've ever had to go along with one of my favorite beers. Then we called it a night and returned to Orlando. Just got back to the hotel. And I had an awesome day, man. Chris was really cool. Uh, he drove me an hour to Tampa, to the Hard Rock, and played a great session together. We won over $1,600. He won, I think, 1575 and I won 47 um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he drove me back. He paid for beers and for dinner, which is really cool. And then at the end, he gave me uh, this card protector. It's a military card protector, really cool. So thanks a lot to Chris, had fun, and just, yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience the whole day. That's it for the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps a lot. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section. I wanna give a big thanks to Chris for hanging out and for driving me to Tampa for buying the beers and uh, for buying the steak dinner. That was a ton of fun. Um, I'm gonna keep this pretty short because it's already been a long video, but I hope you guys are doing well and good luck at the tables. I'll see you next time. Good little soul, good little soul, yeah. How keep this soul? Why do I do these dumb things for this vlog?